All right. So using the question that's sent on WhatsApp, were you able to calculate the NPC? So just get two points, they make one to be initial and the other one to be a current. Okay, so I want you to look at it. I think you can open your WhatsApp. Sorry. Okay, so looking at that one, we have aggregate expenditure, all right? Now on the Y axis there, you can see that we have 45. Then that one is another topic though, under the, under this same um, uh, thing, we'll talk about the 45 degrees line, but you can see the 900 there, isn't it? Which is on the X, X axis. So there's 300, 900 and 1,300 on the X axis. Then the Y axis there, we have 450. There's uh, 900 where there, which is corresponding to the 900. Okay, but that one, is where the two lines are meeting it. Wow. The, so if a line is meeting the 45 degrees line, that means the value on the x-axis is also equal to the value on the y-axis. So there we have the 900 that is you're not seeing on the y-axis. So there is, we, we have like in grade 12, where we would say we have coordinates there saying x is 300. So we have 300,450. Then we have 900, 900, and then we have 1,300, 1,200, right? So you can just pick any two points which are following each other there. Then you can calculate your MPC using the formula that I've given you. So to calculate, for example, the first one, we can say we can pick this um, 450 and 300, and the other one we can pick 900 and 900 there. Okay, then you can find the value of the NPC. Is that okay? All right, but to answer this one, I think it would be best after I talk about the 45 degrees line. But you can just mention that one once more, Duncan. You said for 450, 450 300. is corresponding to 300. According to that uh, equation that we have, isn't it? That I sent to the group. 450 is corresponding to 300, right? Yes. Yes, then what yes. I'm saying is that 900 there is corresponding to 900 in the Y axis because it's, it's, it's crossing that 45 degrees line. Now I will explain this. The 45 degrees line, that line just shows us all points where the X axis is equal to the Y axis. So you can see that, that this line there, the AE line, Mr. Duncan, yes. I know just uh, request uh, our colleagues, uh, those uh, they can uh, unmute their mic, there's feedback. Okay. Uh, they check. can mute, uh, sorry, they can mute their mics. Okay, Komoyo, can you unmute your mic? I think. Okay, okay I think she's managed to do it. All right. So we can see it. Huh? So what I'm saying is the 400 there, look at the question in the, the one I've sent in the group. So the, 400, the 450 is corresponding to 300. Then the 900 there, the 45 degrees line, that line, whenever you see that line, it just represents that the numbers on the x-axis is equal to them. It represents all numbers where the, the x-axis is equal to the y-axis. All right. So... What we're having there is um, the 900. It means on the x-axis, we also have 900, all right? So what we're going to have there is you can pick any two points and then you can calculate the, the, the gradient, the normal way, okay? Okay. Yeah, so like in this case, Mr. Duncan, if we were to calculate the MP, the, the MPC mm -hmm. or the MPS, how would you go about it now using the uh, these figures? Sorry? Yeah, according to the question, say, uh, what is the value of the MPC and mm -hmm. the value of MPS? So how do you compute now using the, the figures? 
Yes, so the MPC, that's what I was telling you, that the MPC shows us the change in C, right, over the change in Y. So what you are getting there, how to find the change in C, I'm saying pick two points there on the Y axis. So on the Y axis there, I've said you can pick the 450 and the 900, isn't it? Because the 900 there, when we have X, okay, maybe for this question, is it okay after we do what is coming, then we can get back to this one. I think All right. It's mainly understood when we do the 45 degrees line. So now I just want you to understand what this MPC shows, okay? The marginal propensity to consume. All right. So maybe uh, let me pick Sydney. Sydney, maybe you can help us, okay? If let's say Sydney, you're getting paid a 1,000 kwacha, right? Now, you know, income, you can only do two things to income. You can either spend it, which means you consume it, right? Or you can save it up, isn't it? Now, Sydney, if you get, let's say, 1,000 kwacha, how much of it would you, what percentage of it would you spend? Or how much would you spend out of that 1,000? And how much would you love to save up? Obviously, everything will be gone. Okay. Now, I said everything. In, in economics, we're going to call on consumption. I will go we'll call for, for an assumption that, let's say, you're having less expenses and not the reality ones. All right? So I want you to save part of it and just consume part of it. All right. So let's put that it's a mandatory that you save something. How much would you save and how much would you consume? I would save with 100 watch and consume 900. Okay. So if you're consuming 900 and you're saving 100 watch in percentage form, what is 900? The 900 it means it's 90% of the income, isn't it? That's what you're spending on consumption, right? Then you're only saving up 10% of that money, right? If I was to put it in terms of percentages, I would say Sydney is spending 90% of his income and saving up how much? Only 10% of his income, isn't it? So that 10%, all right, it's given term in economics and you call that the MPC. All right. Understood. So that MPC is just the percentage of, of extra income that is consumed. So whenever you hear MPC, you're just asking to say, out of the extra income that an individual can have, how much of it are they going to spend? What percentage rather? or fraction are they going to spend, all right? That 10% now that they're saving up is what will now be captured as the what? The NPS. That's why I told you that the NPC is always between zero and one. This zero represents uh, nothing, meaning the person is spending zero, uh, is, is, is saving, is, 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 is consuming nothing. But the one means the 100%. So 100% in terms of numbers, it's given as a one, isn't it? because it's 100 divided by 100, so it's just one. But for example, 90%, it means what? 90% means um, 90 over 100, which is equal to 0 0.9. So when you see the MPC of 0 0.5, that means the consumer is consuming 50% of their extra income. That's what the MPC shows us. Okay, so maybe let me ask Mwenje, all right? If Mwenje, you hear that Duncan spends 70% uh, of his extra income. Whenever Duncan receives money, he gets 70% consumes it, then 30% he saves it up. Mwenje, what is Duncan's MPC? Okay, um, probably she's not there. Mr. Chinkwembe, can you try it out? Yeah, um, that would be 30%, which is 0 0.3. Yes, so the 0 0.3 is what? The 0 0.3 is the what? 
the, uh, the, MP, the MPS is for saving the yes, 30% fees. Yes. yes, so if, is I'm spending, if I'm spending 70% of my income, that means my MPC, I'm, my MPC is, seven, is 0 0.7, which is 70%. Yes. Then what I'm saving, yes. so if I'm, I'm either consuming or saving, so the other one which is remaining, which is 0 0.3, is just a seven. All right. So that which now, is the makes, MPS. yes, that's the MPS, which is now showing us the savings function. So the savings function is just going to be the opposite of the consumption function. So now you can see here that income is either what? Consumed or it is spent. So you either consume it or you save it. All right. Is either you consume it or you save Madam it. Kumo, you can be, um, switch off your video. All right. So what we're going to have is, okay, so let me just have this. Okay, am I showing? Can you guys steal my screen? Showing which one? We are, we are able to see the saving function. Okay, yeah, exactly. All right, so what I was saying is, we are having uh, now the savings function, right? So now what I was saying is income is either consumed or saved if we have no, no government intervention. Because you know, no government intervention or foreign sector, whatever income that consumers receive, they either consume it or they spend it, right? Now, here what we have is this, the MPC, all right? The MPC plus the MPS is equal to one. So this one here is representing the 100%. So remember I said, Duncan spends 100%, isn't it, of his income. So for example, I have, I said my MPC is 70%, right? Which is 0 0.7. And meaning my MPS would be what? Would be 30%, which is the 0 0.3, which is remaining. So how did we come up with that? We came up with that because of this. The MPC plus MPS should always be equal to what? One. That's an identity. Okay, so MPC plus MPS is always equal to one. Why? If, for example, I'll ask uh, uh, Lulu just maybe to help us with this. If Duncan's MPC is 0 0.5 or 50%, what is the MPS? Oh, we can have anybody just to try to answer it. What's the figure? 0 0.5, right? 0 0.5. Exactly. So we're just doing MPC. So you should know that income is either saved or consumed. And that's the, way, the reason why MPC plus MPS is always equal to what? To one. So if you have your MPC being represented by the letter B, so you can put where there's MPC here, we put B, okay? Like it is being represented here by the letter B. So you can see that the MPS will therefore be equal to one minus what? The MPC, isn't it? So it will be one minus B, that's the one minus B that you're seeing here, all right? Then, so I said the MPS is just the opposite of the other one, isn't it? So you can see that in the, MP, in the MPC, our A was positive, here it's going to be negative. So our MPS is just represented as negative A plus one minus B, then everything, this is the Y, and that is all that is there, okay? So therefore, you, do, you can just write this down that the NPS shows us how savings changes when income changes. How savings change when income changes, all right? That's what it shows us. So you know, obviously, when people's income changes, there are also level of savings changes, isn't it? So let's say, for example, you start earning more money, obviously, the probability that you'll be, in, you'll be saving money will be high, isn't it? Because now you have more spare income that you have no, you have no uh, plan to spend. So you'll be saving it more, isn't it? All right. Now, the last thing that I just want to show you now is this. When you capture this, trust me, every calculation under national income will become very easy for you the moment that you capture this, you get what disposable income is. 
Now, disposable income, just from the word itself, disposable, meaning you're disposing it. It is simply income that remains, okay, after all obligations are met. So now I believe that all of us, since you're working, you receive income. That is called gross income, isn't it? But out of that gross income, there are all these taxes, the pension schemes that you pay for NAPSA, for NIPA, and all that, whatever thing, the NIMA. When you have all those deductions after they're made, now you receive that money. The money that now comes to you is what we call as what? As disposable income. So and that's the definition that is there. So that amount of money that you go and get, probably through a check or whatever they give you, is called disposable income. It's what you receive after all deductions have been made. All right? It's called disposable income. Now, disposable income is given by this formula here, by the first version that you can see. Okay, it's just Y minus T. So in economics, we know that there is NAPSA, there are all these deductions that are made, all of them. But for simplicity's sake, we just come up with, uh, we just follow T, which is the tax. We just consider tax, all right? And forget about all these other things. Now your disposable income, this Y, the first Y here, so your YD is the symbol for, so this YD is the symbol for disposable income. Your YD, disposable income, is equal to what? Your Y, meaning the gross income you receive, minus the T, which is the tax. Now, tax can be in two forms. Tax can be given as a lump sum, okay, or it can be tax rate. By lump sum, so lump sum tax is just tax that is charged as income. So let's say, for example, government just comes in and says, your tax, you'll be paying every month, you'll be paying 100 kwacha, like the way that you like the way that you pay uh, your rentals. It doesn't matter how you use it, whether you're sleeping in the house or not sleeping, it doesn't matter. You have got a fixed amount of money that you pay at the end of the month, isn't it? So when tax is paid in that form, you call the type of tax as lump sum tax. You just give them a certain amount of money, all right? But tax can also be in another form, which is called what? Tax rate. Now tax rate, that one, how the government charges you depends on the level of income that you're earning. For example, we have this code in Zambia, the pay as you earn. So meaning the higher the amount of money that a person is getting, the higher their tax. That type of uh, tax is called the what? The tax rate. So the government, for example, just comes and says, people will be paying 10% of their income. So meaning if you're earning 100 kwacha, we get 10% of that. Okay, the government gets 10% of that, then you call that what? The tax rate. So that 10% is the tax rate, meaning it's the percentage of income. Is that okay? So meaning, for example, if, um, okay, let me just give you an example to help you think. If Duncan, if, if the government, uh, the tax rate is 10% and Duncan earns 1,000 kwacha every month, how much money does the government collect as tax from Duncan? Anybody to try it out? So Duncan is earning how much? 1,000 every month. And the government charges 20% tax. How much money is, going, is the government going to collect from me? 200. How much? 200 kwacha. You said how much? 200 kwacha. Uh, no. So you get, it's, it, the government is charging 10%. That's what I said. 10% as tax. 200. You said 200. 200. I you said, said 20. No, no, I 20 said 20%. I said 20%? Yes. I thought you said I mentioned 10%. Okay, I thought you I mentioned first place. Okay. Okay, okay, let's speak. Let's keep it at 20%. So you know that 20% is, in terms of a number, is 0.2, isn't it? So meaning if Duncan is earning 1,000 kwacha, okay, I'm earning 1,000 kwacha, the government is collecting 20% of tax. So that means you get the 20%, then you multiply it by the what? By the 1,000 to see how much money the government is going to collect. Which will be 200 kwacha. That will be 200 kwacha, right? So it's 0 0.2, isn't it? So 20% yeah. is just 0 0.2 in terms of the number. So you do 20 divided by 100. So you get 0 0.2 times how much? 100 kwacha, which is just going to be, or times 1,000, it means it will be what? 200 kwacha. So how did you do that? You got the 20% and you multiplied it by the income to see the amount of tax that the government is charging, isn't it? 
So what we're going to have here is the what is now here, what that is called the second version. We're saying yd is equal to, so you get the income, then you say minus. Now the tax being collected is ty. This small t is representing what? Tax rate. Meaning, let's say for example, it can be 20%, you just put 0 0.2 times y, which is the income that the person is earning. All right, hope that is okay. So if the government is only charging a tax rate, it means your disposable income will be like this. If the government is charging now both of them, lump sum tax and the other one, it will just be what? Y, which is your income, minus the TY, which is representing the tax rate, and then minus T, which is just representing the what? The lump sum tax. Is that okay? Uh, Mr. Duncan. Yes. Uh, so the the uh, the uh, the Y is representing the gross income, isn't it? Yes, the income. Okay. Yeah, then the yeah. Y. Okay. Let's. So is it okay if we can do this example? Maybe I think it will help you to understand more. All right. So you can see there we have this the first version whatever. Then now we have an example there. So it says C consumption right is equal to two hundred and fifty plus. 0 0.75 right and then open brackets you have y minus t so that y minus t is the representing disposable income isn't it now i want to find out here you have been given that t is equal to 1000 so what type of tax is that is that lump sum tax or tax rate this is a lump sum lump sum right because it's just been given as an amount so the moment that we have that it means we are going to put, uh, you just get your 250. So the disposable income appears, okay, let me take you back to this first slide where there's consumption. So you can see that here we have consumption. This is a general function of the general form of consumption, isn't it? Now this is A plus B, which we have discussed is the NPC. Now this Y here is the disposable income and that's where you're going to be putting it. So instead of putting Y there, You'll be putting now y minus to put this y minus t where there's y because now you're, you're looking at disposable income because so this 250 is representing the a plus 0 0.75 is representing the npc then now where is that yd the yd is the disposable income which is now the one which they have put as y minus what minus t so there if you're told to calculate consumption it means you just have your your thing here. So since you have just been given the lump sum tax, you just put where they stay there, you put 1,000. And if you have income, then you just put it there, then you can calculate your consumption. Okay. But let me try to see if we can have something here. Um, okay. I think I'm send, I've sent something to your WhatsApp, the group. All right. I hope we, could, we are seeing it. So I've sent something small in the group and it says section A, answer all questions. Then it says you're given the following information about an economy. Then it says find the equilibrium level of income. Have you seen that? Have you seen it in the group? Yes, we have seen it. Okay, so now you've seen there that what we're having is consumption C is equal to what? 100 plus 0 0.7 YD, okay? So sometimes you'll just put Y. It's up to you to know that it's always YD. And then you have I, you have G, and then you have the tax rate of 20%. Now, equilibrium income is just equal to, you say C, you say Y is equal to C plus I plus G. We'll do that tomorrow. But for now, I just want you to concentrate on that C, the consumption. So that you say 100 plus 0 0.7 YD. So there, where there's YD there, I want you to get rid of YD. I want you to put now, which what type of tax have we been given? I want you to check tax. the type of tax. It's a tax yeah. rate, isn't it? Because they've just told us that tax rate is 20%. So in terms of a number, we're not going to say that, we'll call it a 0. Point what? You, you put that as 0. 0.2 Y. That means your tax is 0.2 Y. 
which is 20% of income, okay? So it means there your consumption C, I want you to just write it down. It will be C is equal to what? 100 plus 0 0.7, then you open brackets, put it the way that you have, you've seen it on the screen here. So it will be 0 0.7, okay? Then you open brackets, then where this YD, we have its Y, your income, minus 0.2Y. It means you would have put it the way that your second version is here. Have you gotten it? Come again. Uh, have you seen your second version? Can you see my screen first of all? You've seen the second version, right? So the second version is just telling us the about when we are just given the tax rate. You've seen it? So what we have been given there is this expression now in the question. It says 100 plus 0 0.7. So the 100 is representing A, isn't it? And then the B there, we have 0 0.7. Now I'm saying you put now where there is Y there, you've seen it? So your disposable income will be Y minus, what's the tax? It's 0 0.2 Y. So the small t there is 0 0.2, which is a tax rate. Then you multiply that by Y. So it means you will get 100 plus 0 0.7, open brackets, Y minus 0 0.2 Y. That's how your C is will be written as. Have we seen it? Yes, we have seen it. Yes. You get it, huh? Uh, yes. So the, in, in this case, A is represented by 100. Yes. And that's consumption, huh? Yeah, that's consumption. So what you have there is the 100 is the A, which is the disposable, which is the, the autonomous consumption. Then your 0 0.7 there, that's your MPC. Okay? Is that okay? Yes. So that's how you put it there. So after 0 0.7, now you open the brackets. Your YD is your disposable income. So how did we say disposable income? Disposable income is income minus your tax. But right here we've been given the tax rate. So the tax rate is 0 0.2Y. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. maybe just um, on that one. So in this case, uh, the, the B is representing what? The B is the MPC. Okay, okay. Yes, remember? So B, yeah. Yes. You can, if you can see my screen there, you can see the second yes. version is this, isn't it? It's A yes. plus B, Y, D. Yes. So you know that your B is a 0 0.7. So if you look at this and you look at what I've sent, what I've sent in the group, is the same exact mm -hmm. expression. Where there is okay. A, they just put numbers. There there is A, they have put 100. Where there is B, they have put 0 0.7. Then okay, now your it. YD, your YD now is what you're going to change. Your YD is simply your Y, your income minus tax. But what we've been given okay. is the tax rate. So the tax there is TY, meaning 0 0.2Y. Okay. Okay. Yes. I hope that is okay. So maybe let me just, I've sent something more here. I want you just to take a look at it. I've sent a question, it's, it's written question four, it's just like a picture and it's written question four. So it says a hypothetical economy is given the following identities. So it says C is 3,000, I is 2,000, G is 2,500, then T, meaning the tax is 0 0.4Y. So what is our tax there? Is it lump sum or tax rate? The tax rate. Yeah, exactly. So now I want you to see what is the expression there of the C, the consumption. Our consumption will be, okay, my time has won. So we are remaining with about nine minutes of which I believe we should. Be. So what is our consumption there? C is equal to what? If we, to, if we were to put it in this format of our original, how we know our consumption is. Consumption, we know that is. Uh, autonomous consumption plus the B plus the Y, isn't it? So what we've been given there is 3,000, which is the autonomous, isn't it? Is A? Yes, we've just been given the A. So we have the okay. A, so we can put plus, what is our B? Our B in this case 
Our MPC is what? Our MP is 0 0.6. No, you can check that's MPS, right? Yeah, also we need to get the MPS, the MPC. Yes, we have the MPS, so we need to get the MPC from the MPS. Okay. So the MPC so is 0.4. Yes, there's the MPC 0 .4. will be 0 0.4. So it means our consumption there will be 3,000 plus what? 0 0.4, which is the NPC, right? Then you open your brackets. Then now you put your YD. Your YD will be what? Y minus 0 0.4Y. Have we got any? Come on again. So we have our A, isn't it? From our C there. They've sold us that C is equal to 3,000. So that 3,000 is representing our A. But what I'm saying is that we need to write it in this format, isn't it? A plus B, Y, D. So what is our B there? It's our MPC, isn't it? So your MPC is given as what? We have our MPS, meaning we can calculate the MPC, which is 0 0.4, because we know that MPC plus MPS will give us one. So since we have our MPC of 0 0.6, we can find our MPS, our MPC, which, is, which will just be 0 0.4, because it will be 1 minus 0 0.6. So meaning our MPC there, we can find it's equal to 0 0.4. So our B there is 0 0.4. Now I said YD. How do you put your YD? Your YD, I've said it's Y, your income, minus your tax. So what is our tax here? We have been given the tax rate. Tax rate is... A percentage of income. So if it is, if they have given you tax rate as 0 0.4, meaning 40% of income, so it means it will be 0 0.4 Y. That in itself will be called your tax. All right. So I believe that was okay. So it will be Y minus 0 0.4 Y. Yes. So that is it. So once you capture this, then we can do now some calculations in the in the next class. So I'll start at, yes, I'll start at 19, at 19 hours. Um, not at 19, I think maybe I can make it 20 hours so that maybe I can allow others as well to settle. So we can start at, nine, at 20 hours tomorrow, but I'll record it still, all right? So that we can get to interact. But on these, the investment, these are just theories, all of them. Okay, there's nothing to calculate here on investment. And also on government expenditure, there's nothing here to calculate, apart from knowing to say G and T. So you can just pass through them so that when I come tomorrow, I can just explain, I can just do some more, maybe give you a burden your mind more as well on the MPC. And then we can now look at the this multiplier thing here. So this multiplier principle mainly depends on your understanding of the two taxes that we have done, which is the tax rate and the MPC. So just pass through the notes as well, again, alone on the slides, and try to see how best you can get to understand them more. I know to say right now you, you've gotten the understanding, but I know you can understand them even better now that you have this understanding and just pass through the notes. So especially this part, trust me, once you get this, okay, this part under national income, then you're all good. Everything else will depend mainly on this, especially on the types of tax and how they get to affect the disposable income. All right, so that is that. I believe we are okay. Unless you have a question before I get to close. This is unit two. We are still under unit two, two. I mean, unit two or is unit three? Yes. Yeah, so the unit, uh, I think this is unit two. Okay. Yes. We hope we can go through also unit three and four before the test on mine on Sunday. Yeah, I'll try my level best because as well, if I just finish them without you guys understanding them, then it will be nothing because you saw what happened with the test it should bring everything that you're seeing here. So, but just please try to pass through this, all right? 
so that uh, tomorrow we can I can finish this and start partly the other one. Okay. All right, so please go through this consumption function uh, and work on the disposable income here. You should be able to see all the being given tax rate or this, how do you, how the, how would they, how would this be? So that once you pass through this and you're clear, it will be very easy for me tomorrow if we have to speed up. It will be very easy for me to, to explain the multiplier. But if you have not understood this, the calculation of the multiplier will be very difficult. So just go through them step by step the notes i'm sure they should be okay all right so um so the ydo is, is a disposable income yes yd just means disposable income so this okay. yd part just means disposable income which is just the money you get with after tax okay okay so you mean the y minus the tax that's what it means so but tax can be in two forms it can either be just in this form of t which is the amount of money or it can be given as a percentage of income, which can be given as TY, which is just the TY, okay? Yes, sir. So the oh. YD, yeah, no, I've got no point. Okay, so we'll get to me tomorrow then, and yeah. Okay, let me just pray then. Father, we thank you for this class. We give you praise and honor. Father, I pray for your understanding. To rest upon each and every one of us, I pray that, Lord, even as they pass through, Lord, these notes, I pray that, Lord, may you grant them more understanding of this. I commit everything to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, be before Amen. you go, uh, the first one that uh, you recorded.